Mr. Investor Lot, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing BarkBox and how I think it can 20x. We're going to be looking at its marketing today and how they are strategic geniuses. We're going to be looking at their current cash flow and how they're generating their money. We'll look at the different revenue streams, the different products that they have, and why I think this stock can 20x. So first things first, let's get a little gist and a background of what BarkBox is. And then we're going to take a look at the industry. We're going to take a look at their marketing model. We're going to take a look at their products. We're going to go through and see what is their annual growth going to be like and where they can be in the future. But before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Miguel. I'm a retail investor here in London and I look for the highest risk, juiciest growth stocks I can find. I want to make some major money. I don't want to make small peas. I want to make 20x, 30x, 50x my money. We want to live a good life. We want to be in it for the long run and see that long-term growth, baby. So if you want to watch us on our journey and you want to see the latest and newest and freshest, juiciest growth stocks, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell and hit me with a thumbs up. First things first, let me introduce BarkBox to you. Introducing BarkBox. It's a subscription-based box service to keep your dog happy. Contains toys, treats, and chewies. And it's every single month you can get it delivered to you, tailored specifically to the dog's needs, delivered directly to your door. So let's take a look at this company. This is a data-driven machine learning algorithm-based company that is looking at the best ways to sell products to the consumer. They basically run a subscription-based box service for these dogs to keep them happy. And they found out their owners are willing to spend so much money on these dogs that they'll be able to create a very juicy revenue stream from these pet owners. So what they wanted to do was make dogs as happy as they make us. Because humans and dogs are better together. So they're committed to creating the world's best products and experiences to satisfy each individual dog's needs. So here you can see these are all the range of different products they have. They have the Bark Box, which is monthly themed box of treats and toys. They have the Super Chewer, which is very durable dog stuff. So this is how BarkBox's official business model works. As you can see here, you can subscribe for $23 per box per month. They ship this box straight out to you immediately with free shipping. And then the dog party begins. So the Bark Box generally contains a themed collection every month. You know, you have two innovative toys, two all natural bags of treats and a chew. And as you know, everybody likes to spend seasonally. We enjoy Christmas, we enjoy Halloween, we enjoy Easter. And here you can see they even got Thanksgiving, they got Dogsgiving, they've got Halloween boxes, Home Alone Christmas boxes, even the Autumn Tale. They've even got boxes like your dog's going to the fun fair. By creating all these themes and models, they are getting consistent revenue all year round. So the way that the Bark Box is going to access the market is they're going to come through a SPAC merger. So they're going to be merging with a company called Northern Star Acquisition Corp. And you can just tell people are excited by it because you've seen a nice juicy run up. From the initial SPAC price, you know, of $12, this just got updated now. We're already up 2.9% today. It's now up at $16, so it's like a 30% rise already. And a few days ago on Christmas Eve, it actually reached a 52 week high of $19.54. So what could this stock potentially do? This company is particularly interesting because they create a holistic approach to pets. So as you can see here, they've got dental care for pets, durable stuff, monthly box of theme treats. They even have dog wear and also they're creating personal and nutritious meals for dogs. First of all, let's look at the global pet industry and see how much money there is in this industry. 33% of the pets owned in the world are dogs. They are the favorite pet to keep in the world. It's next followed by cats, 23%, fish, 12%, and birds with 6%. Next, let's see the exact figure of how many dogs there are that are pet owned in the world. There are 470 million dogs, according to Statista.com, that are kept as pets worldwide. Dogs come out on top as the leading pet in 2018. And within the same year, you can see cats were narrowly behind with 373 million. So let's look at how much the US is currently spending on the pet industry. It's estimated that the US pet industry is worth $99 billion in 2020. It's an industry that is steadily growing year by year, and it grew from $97.5 billion in 2019 to $99 billion in 2020. So although we had this coronavirus pandemic, we can see that it still grew $1.5 billion bigger as an industry. So the predictions are that the global pet care market will be worth $358.62 billion by 2027, that it's going to experience a compounded annual growth rate of around 6%. So we can even see here that within Australia, 60% of households have at least one pet. This is typically a cat or dog. And within a lifetime, 83% of Australians have owned a pet at one point. 
The pet industry is also considered recession resistant or recession proof. It came through 9-11 and the Great Recession of 2008 as well unscathed. And people are continuing to spend more than ever on their dogs. In 2018 alone, Americans spent $72 billion on their pets. And according to Statista.com, within America we can see that they spent only $17 billion in 1994 and 2020 here today we spend $99 billion a year on pets. And a survey on pet owners shows that 90% of pet owners are willing to spend more than $100 a month on pets. I wanted to look at the statistics and see what do consumers like to buy the most for their dogs. So as we can see here, 44% of it is spent on dry pet foods. It's next followed by pet treats and chewies. And then it's stuff like, you know, pet and flea medications, grooming products, oral care, vitamin supplements, wet foods, collars, and cleanup stuff. I also looked at a research gate study which showed that dog owners are more serious about buying healthy dog food than are buying healthy food for themselves. The data also showed that when humans are purchasing, they're less brand loyal, but when they're buying food for their dogs, they're very brand loyal. When we look at the US alone, we can see that 48.2 million households own a dog. The next thing I wanted to look at was go to Bark's website, go to investors and see what's their management presentation like for December 2020. So currently Bark is going through a SPAC merger with Northern Star Acquisition Corp. It's STIC on the New York Stock Exchange and when they finish their SPAC they'll be known as Bark, B-A-R-K. Lots of investors are extremely bullish on this company so let's break down why this could be a great business. Number one, so they are serving products to 1 million different dog subscribers every single month. And considering that their basic box for subscription starts at $23 per month, that means that they could potentially be making $23 million per month as of right now. They have outstanding financial performance. So they're looking at gross margins of 60%, net revenue growth of 65%, $369 million in net revenue growth for the financial year of 2021. And when they targeted the pet, they made sure they looked at the world's most owned pet. So out of all the households that own pets globally, dogs make up for the favorite pet. So as we can see here on the left, Bark has grown its active subscription base and they're in the leading position to be one of the best global brands for dogs. They have 1.1 million active subscriptions, they have 6.5 million Bark customers, 11 million contacts and 8.5 million social media influencers. What I really like about this is they've got contact. When you get a customer you want to retain the customer and what they've got here is customers contact details and they can just prompt them every now and then you know here's a little treat, here's a new box, come and buy this kind of thing. Also their products must be quite good because they've got 1.1 active subscriptions. 1.1 million people are willing to pay every single month to get that subscription subscription service for their dogs. In terms of social media following, this could be one of the biggest driving factors for a company to explode into growth. You have a great product, but you need to show people it's out there. And if you also have a loyal fan base and following, you could build like an Apple-like brand. One of the best things about this company is the diversity in their business model and strategy. They have created a product for each and every category you could think of. They wanted to create a holistic kind of lifestyle product for these dogs. So in terms of entertainment and treats, you can see the Bark Box. When we're talking about fun toys, we're talking about the Bark Super Chewer. What about when your pet wants to sleep? We've got the Bark Home Box. These guys even have dental boxes for the dogs, as you can see here. And last but not least, what they've just released in 2020, Bark Eats, which is a personalized food blend and service in 2020 for your dog. So we can see here, when you're going down their products range, they start off with the plush toys and treats, and they continue to innovate until they get to food where there's a lot of revenue and growth to be made. So what's good about the subscription model as well is people keep paying and they keep receiving monthly. So you've locked in a customer and you can continue to have this customer for a lifetime if you keep that customer happy. One of the things we love about a company as well is when they're data driven and focused, they want to look at what works. So here you can see they have a data centric model that is fueling their product innovation. They want to see what customers respond to, how do customers buy, what's really in and happening at the moment, which one of their products is the most successful so they can work on that and continue to grow and improve their range. And this monthly customer base as well, which they can contact and be like, hey, we're here. Thank you very much for being a shopper. We've got this new range, new products coming out that you'll really enjoy. Boom another sale. And what they do is they can personalize as well these boxes for the breed, the size, their age, location, activities and a lot of people are willing to pay big bucks to make sure that their dog is healthy and it's breed specific. Whatever they're buying is specific for their breeds. Also on the right you can see the personal customization as well is catering to dogs that may have different allergies you know 
One, a dog here may have a chicken allergy and it's a shih tzu. And that personal tailored feel is a really nice service that you can provide to your customers and clients. And you also look after the dogs because a lot of dogs have allergies and sicknesses and ailments that come up depending on what products they use. They want to build an insane brand. By building such a strong brand, you can get people to buy your products every single year. You get these lunatic fans who are willing to spend major money whatever you release. And we can see this with 170 million unique Bark Post visitors. They've got 8.5 million social media followers already. 23,000 retail outlets are currently selling Bark products and you see on the right here you can see the potential total addressable market per customer has increased to 4x. So we're talking about a company that has a very strong band that is retaining their customer base and their marketing is through the roof. So guys I want to show you something that's really important. I want to tell you a little story. So when I was creating a business once my friend's wife absolutely hated me and she completely ripped me to shreds for putting memes on my business page. Now let me tell you now BarkBox are absolute geniuses because they understand the internet culture, the meme culture and they utilize it to grow their business. Let's take this one post for example. 41,900 likes. Undeniable evidence that Snoopy is really a beagle. You see it's these kinds of things here which make people buy and make people remember you. You make them laugh, you join the meme culture and you create a loyal fan base. People would be willing to sell their kidneys to buy the latest gadgets and iPhones. So by creating a loyal fan base you create people who are fanatics who are willing to buy every product you sell. So the way they utilize social media is key in growth and key in revenue. We can see here that even Bud Light is willing to hire a chief meme officer and pay them $5,000 a month just to create memes. So let's take for example this company called Bang Energy. So they're an energy drinks company in America and they utilize social media influencing and marketing and internet culture to bring massive sales. 1.1 million followers, 3.7 million likes and you know numbers talk for themselves so they took advantage of TikTok. So as of today when this article was written the Bang Energy TikTok account was 1 million followers and their hashtag Bang Energy has been viewed more than 7.6 billion times. The numbers don't lie. When we look at all the content about BarkBox, we can see BarkBox unboxing, BarkBox review, BarkBox reveal. Some of these influencers have 820,000 subscribers and 150,000 views on a single video. They're utilizing influencer marketing to make sure they make more money. So when Nike uses these high level pro athletes and spends millions and millions of dollars on marketing through those athletes to make small slim margins on each trainer, companies like Gymshark turn into billion pound companies and has become one of the most influential sports and fitness brands in the world just by utilizing influencer marketing. But these guys are driven by machine learning so they look at what consumers like, they think about consumer psychology, consumer behavior and the machine will learn from the purchases they make, how long they spend on the site, what products and models they're clicking on and they're purchasing and as the machine learns machine learning is basically the application of artificial intelligence that provides systems the ability to automatically learn and improve from experience and as they start to sell more and introduce more products and new products they'll find out the best ways to generate revenue to make sure they get that high profit margin and one of the things interesting to note here is this add to box revenue so when we go through a mcdonald's drive through or kfc drive through they ask you Hey guys, would you like to make it a large? It's only an extra 50p. Boom, that's upselling. And the way they can do that on their website and the way they are doing it is utilizing, hey, would you like this with that toy? This goes well with that piece of food. Your dog's a shih tzu, it would really like this. Boom, more revenue. And here quarter by quarter, you can see they've grown their add to box revenue. And right now they're predicting that by the third quarter of 2021, they'll be making $6 million in just that one feature of add to box. Let's talk about their growth opportunities. Their total addressable market is expanding always. You've got them accelerating their growth through Amazon. They've got them in so many different retailers here on the right, as you can see. They've got expansion across all their products, ready to sell all these different products, ranges, creating a holistic good life for the dogs. And they also want to grow their initial business. So from 2012, when they first came out with the toys and treats, they want to grow that subscription model business. One of the biggest markets for dogs and for pets is the consumption of pet food. Here they show us a figure in a graph which shows a 5% compounded annual growth rate in the US dog food market size. So as of 2020 this year, $24.7 billion was spent on dog food alone. And owners are willing to spend more if they can get, you know, premium dog food, good dog food. They're showing they know what's best for the dogs. They're providing these mixes with high service and fun experience. They've got high quality dog food. It's personalized by nutritionists. They control the portion so your dog doesn't get too obese. They optimize the flavor depending on the dog's taste buds. And the meals also come with fun toys. 
what more could you want? What they're doing is really using that data-driven experience. They're using that algorithmic learning and learning what the customer wants. They're then delivering innovation, providing them with the next product that they could want. We can see that 74% of dogs' parents give dry food to their pets and 57% of dogs use some sort of speciality formulated dog food to address its specific needs. So they're really trying to target this market with the Bark Eats and produce this premium high quality foods for the right price. How these guys are leveraging their distribution channels to get their products out there is phenomenal. So when they first started, they were just here self-curated. They had a small e-commerce store themselves. And as you can see, over the years, they've built up to be working with Target, Amazon, Subaru. And then here on the right, you can see they're working now with Dunkin' Donuts. They're in Home Goods. They're in Petco, Costco, Walmart. They are utilizing their collaboration with retail partners to create new opportunities for people to buy their new products. So currently, their sales are up on Amazon. You can see they've got a boost formula here. In the marketplace alone, $4.3 billion is spent yearly. And Bark has grown its Amazon sales by 2.5 times year on year. They say they have a proven formula. Let's take a look at their financial highlights so as you see they want to double their subscription growth in 2021 they've got a record high 94.4 percent monthly product retention that customer retention is really important you get a happy customer they're going to spend and they're worth big money for you over a lifetime their gross margin they believe is going to be 61.2 percent and they're looking at an increase of 179 percent year-on-year increase in revenue so as you can see they're always trying to improve their gross profit and they've been doing it the last few years Financial year 2018, it was $71 per subscription for eight months they've made. Now they're looking at $108 profit per subscription. They are also lowering their customer acquisition costs. This is probably utilizing, you know, influencer marketing. So as of now, it's $56 per new customer they acquire and it's going to go down to $42 probably. And remember, if they're able to retain these customers, as they're saying, they're going to be making a predicted gross profit of $108 every eight months for the rest of a lifetime. So long term, in order to grow, they're going to need to have new subscriptions and customers, new products. They're looking to expand their channels. They need to mix different revenues, make sure they get their revenue gross margin up per subscription and also make it cost efficient. So lower their costs, lower their customer acquisition as well. They need to utilize sales and marketing efficiently and leverage both the social media following and the brand influence that they already have. So if we look at their net revenue, they've experienced a compounded annual growth rate between 2018 to 2020 of 23% per year. And they're looking for that annual growth rate to grow 47% per year between 2020 and 2023. So they're estimating to make $706 million in 2023. They're stating that their growth factors are attributed by their strong brands, their expansion of new product lines, efficient cross-selling and distribution channels. We can see as well they want to aggressively grow so they're going to be spending a little bit more on marketing each and every year to make sure that their revenue is really pushed. And early in the year we saw this company called Chewy, we saw them explode from $34 a share all the way up to $99 a share. Could the same thing happen with this company? And with their expected compounded annual growth rate, Bark is estimating that it's going to be growing by 41% between 2020 and 2022. In terms of the team, they've got a really great team here. Their CEO was a director of Amazon Global. He's had like 18 years of leadership experience. Lots of the co-founders as well have been in early stage startup companies and made them successful. As well as their CFO, who used to be a former investment banker for Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan. Their CTO, who's had over 25 years of software engineering and product development experience, who's been in some early stage companies that have turned into larger companies. And their chief commercial officer, who was also working with Viacom before. Overall, I believe BarkBox is a very interesting company who already has cash flow. They already have monthly subscriber base. They already have so many social media followers, avid fans. They already make contact with their company and have loads of innovative products in every single range you can imagine for dogs. So what does the future hold for this company? Maybe it can 20x, maybe it can make some serious money in the future. Let me know your thoughts if you're going to take a position in this company. Remember, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Please do your own research. Mr. Investalot over and out thank you for watching please hit me with a like click that subscribe